Today, uh, this weekend, in fact, we see the rolling thunder protest rolling through Ottawa. Despite the fact the Emergencies Act hasn't been invoked, we're seeing the same level of enforcement. Um, if elected Prime Minister, how would you handle those situations differently? And, and what do you make of these ongoing protests? Well, you have to respect Canadians' free right to protest. In fact, everything that the Prime Minister alleged uh, against the Freedom Convoy has now been proven false. We know that it was a truly peaceful movement. We saw that on February 18th when there was no resistance as the government was breaking in the rule of law. We know that there was no foreign collusion as was potentially alleged. We know that less than 15% of the donations were foreign donations. We know that the arson was not connected and no weapons were found anywhere near Parliament Hill. This was a truly peaceful movement. But the Prime Minister, instead of subjecting himself to an appropriate inquiry as to whether the invocation of the Emergency Act was appropriate, is actually continuing his prosecution of Canadians by asking what were the goals of the convoy or the role of disinformation. Shame on Justin Trudeau for continuing to, to make mockery of the rule of law, I will return the rule of law back to Ottawa. Adam Sos here for Rebel News, and we are on location here in Calgary at the Roman Baber campaign event in his bid for the leadership of the Conservative Party of Canada. This is the latest of our leadershipreports.ca coverage. Now, he is an interesting character. He is a member of Parliament uh, from the Provincial Parliament in Ontario. He was actually ejected from the Provincial uh, Progressive Conservative Party there by Doug Ford because he issued a letter critical of COVID-19 responses and the infringing of people's fundamental rights in Ontario. He has garnered a following among those concerned about issues on freedom and he's very much hinged his campaign on that frontier standing up for Canadians freedoms we're gonna be speaking with him in just a little bit as well as some of the people in attendance to see why they are throwing their support behind Roman Babber uh, well actually I've been out to see a few of the candidates so I knew Roman was coming to town and I really wanted to have a chance to see what he had to say of course so uh, it was a bit of a spur of the moment when he sort of appeared all of a sudden I thought oh, I'll try to make a concerted effort to come out and have a listen to what he has to say. So um, I like his uh, style of politics and stuff like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you're watching something online, it's a little different than seeing somebody in person. So mm -hmm. especially if you get a chance to ask a question or two. So that's why I decided to come out. Yeah, I was just thinking uh, the clips I've seen of him in Parliament. Um, he's kind of one of the only guys that will actually list stats and data that go against the narrative. And so I'm interested to see what he has to say here. He comes cross to me as genuine in what he's talking about, uh, particularly like against a mandate and personal freedom when it comes to medical choice. Uh, and there were so few during the whole pandemic that truly spoke uh, uh, to me, aligns with my personal belief. And I appreciate that he made it all the way from Toronto to here. So that's why I'm here to pay my respect um, to uh, a voice that uh, is genuine. Our political scenes in this country has really changed over the past decade, uh, maybe even a little bit more. I just feel our freedom is at, at stake. Uh, our current leader isn't really um, a leader. And I've come from Eastern Europe. I know what dictatorship and communism is like. And I feel like Canada is going down that direction already. And so I'm here to um, support Roman and really just welcome a new leadership and if if nothing else immediately would be more uh, just giving our current government a real challenge and you know waking them up to say we're here for liberty and we want our freedom back our freedom to travel our freedom to be able to speak whether it's on social media or, or whatnot um, and really just regain our charter rights back and so from the other candidates was there one other than Roman who sort of stood out to you uh, really exemplary candidates well, certainly Pierre Polyev, you know, he's uh, <laughs> he had a big draw there, of course, and stuff like that. I did have a chance to listen to Leslie Lewis. So all the candidates are very impressive. I think everybody has their strengths and weaknesses and stuff like that. So hopefully that you're able to determine in your own mind who you think would best fill the job and maybe have the best luck as far as having a a new party in power. So you uh, we were just speaking right before we started rolling here. You said you had some questions about Mr. Beber's opinions, some opinions from the past. Who was the best person to fight for freedom leading us moving forward? Yeah. Um, what brings you out to this event in particular and what did you want to ask Mr. Beber? Well, I wanted to ask um, Mr. Beber why he endorsed Peter McKay in 2020. I also want to ask him what his opinion is on unborn Canadians, like on abortion, because I think that's really important to protect freedom for all Canadians. I'm very interested 
in, in developing Canada's natural resources, I think that Canada's natural resources are a blessing. And I'm not going to let oil and gas be cancelled. So I am now joined by Roman Baber, uh, Conservative Party leadership hopeful. Uh, the first question I wanted to ask you is that we've seen many people now jumping on this freedom bandwagon now that it seems to be popular. Many who are quiet throughout the lockdowns, quiet throughout restrictions. Um, do you feel the, fa the fact that you sort of paid a political price for writing a letter opposed to these lockdowns uh, grants you some credibility among people who are concerned about issues surrounding freedom? I appreciate that sincerely. Look, I don't regret anything I've done and I'm proud of the fact that um, I came out on this issue very early on in January 2021 when there was no conversation about the remarkable toll of lockdowns on Canadians. Uh, in fact, I have been opposing lockdown internally since May 2020 when the narrative uh, should have really changed. And I welcome all my friends that have come around on this and, and are now um, advocating for democracy and freedom of Canadians. I think it's important for viewers to appreciate that I will always say what I believe and, and do what I believe is right even when it's unpopular. So today, uh, this weekend, in fact, we see the rolling thunder protest rolling through Ottawa. Despite the fact the Emergencies Act hasn't been invoked, we're seeing the same level of enforcement. Um, if elected Prime Minister, how would you handle those situations differently? And, and what do you make of these ongoing protests? Well, you have to respect Canadians' free right to protest. In fact, everything that the Prime Minister alleged uh, against the Freedom Convoy has now been proven false. We know that it was a truly peaceful movement. We saw that on February 18th when there was no resistance as the government government was breaking the rule of law. We know that there was no foreign collusion as was potentially alleged. We know that less than 15% of the donations were foreign donations. We know that the arson was not connected and no weapons were found anywhere near Parliament Hill. This was a truly peaceful movement. But the Prime Minister, instead of subjecting himself to an appropriate inquiry as to whether the invocation of the Emergency Act was appropriate, is actually continuing his prosecution of Canadians by asking what were the goals of the convoy or the role of disinformation. Shame on Justin Trudeau for continuing to to make mockery of the rule of law I will return the rule of law back to Ottawa do you feel that being born in the former Soviet Union has sort of instilled in you this uh, strong stance this strong defense of freedom Yes, I was born in the Soviet Union and we did not gain our freedom until 1989 and, and that's why I'm so passionate about Canada's democracy and, and regretfully I see some similarities. You know, in the Soviet Union uh, you were not allowed to travel between the republics or, or exit beyond communist walls. Uh, I am I'm, I'm very upset that more than three and a half million Canadians are unable to board a plane and enter and exit Canada, that should upset not just 3.5 million Canadians, that should upset 35 million Canadians. Uh, we see how the role of, of a for, false narrative by government, um, when we know that regretfully 80% of those that passed away were in long-term care homes, we know that the virus is so much more transmissible than we initially thought, but that makes all the merics, metrics we're worried about quite considerably lower. And despite that, the narrative did not change, and it's on the basis of that narrative, the government engaged in remarkable, unprecedented action that erodes our democracy. Uh, I think we need to restore Canada's democracy and opportunity. I'm very committed uh, to, to my country, and uh, I'm, I'm confident that we'll be successful. And very quickly on some of the key issues, what is your position on the carbon tax? Yeah, so I oppose the carbon tax. I oppose the pipe, the anti-pipeline bill. Uh, I don't believe that, uh, you know, taxing Sally $10 at the gas pump is going to move global temperatures. I would like to make Canada a natural resources superpower. I believe that our natural resources are a blessing. I'm not going to let oil and gas be cancelled. It's not just good for our economic bottom line, our strategic interests. I think it's also good for the planet because Canadians can derive and produce energy. Uh, uh, safer and cleaner than any other nation in the world. What's your position on digital IDs? I'm concerned. I'm, I'm seeing now that uh, some digital IDs, as at least proposed by the province of Ontario, will have their medical status embedded in it. I don't think that we need to be wearing our medical status together with our ID. Second of all, I am concerned by the fact that there's going to be government friction in our ability to present identification and specifically uh, your ID is inherent to you and it should be unconditional. And we already see examples where government rewards good behavior or punishes bad behavior. For instance, in the province of Ontario, uh, you cannot get a liver transplant. You go to the bottom of the line if you've had one too many drinks in your life. And this is in a socialized medicine. So I'm very, very concerned uh, about the implementations of this, what this will do for our privacy, what this will do potentially for, governmenting, for government uh, regulating behavior. Thank you. And, and your position on state-funded media. And then just one question yeah. after that, and we'll wrap it up. Absolutely. So you can't have free and independent media when government derives its existence out of the government. How are you going to objectively cover 
the government when the government sounds your paycheck. And so my position is not only will I defund CB, I will get CBC out of the news business, I will end all the bailouts and all the subsidies. Uh, but most importantly, but in addition to that, we also need to look at advertising. In the last couple of years, government has become one of the biggest advertisers uh, on, on, through all uh, mediums. And, and that, of course, uh, creates a certain amount of dependency, which I think affects coverage. So I'm going to end uh, the financial relationship between government and media and, and relook at the way that government advertises. And finally, what sets you apart from other leading candidates like Pierre Polyev or Dr. Lesson Lewis, and why do you feel you're the best person to take on Justin Trudeau? So look, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not a very experienced politician, and I think that actually gives me an advantage. Uh, I, I have considerable life experience. I'm an immigrant to Canada. I practiced law for 12 years before I was elected, last eight of which were, were the small business. I know what it's like to pay the bills. Um, I am... I, I say what I think and I, I do what I believe and I've never been afraid of cancel culture or radical left-wing ideology. Uh, I have opposed uh, this public health exercise which I judge to be causing considerable harm to Canadians when it was very unpopular to do so at a great political risk and Canadians can count on me to continue to do that, to fight for them uh, despite how difficult the landscape is. Um, I. Uh, I think that, that we, this is very important right now as Canadians are looking to restore faith and trust in government. I'm uniquely positioned to do that and unite the Conservative Party of Canada. We need to get our democracy back in full and we need to go back to normal. Nothing short of that will do. That's it. <laughs> Well, the event here in Calgary is wrapping up. The 75 people or so who were in attendance were very receptive to the message, which largely hinged on ending mandates, standing up for freedom, and putting an end to the madness that has been governance under Justin Trudeau. Roman Weber said that democracy has been fundamentally attacked and undermined, and that he wants to get to work to fix that. He was very straight-laced and transparent, and people resonated with the sentiment that he is an honest guy who says what's on his mind and is going to do what is right. It remains to be seen if he can win that uphill battle for the leadership of the Conservative Party of Canada. He's certainly going to do his best. He is a verified candidate now who has paid his fees and meet all the deadlines, so he will be on the ballot, and he's hoping that he'll be able to win. As always, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in. For all the latest, make sure you go to leadershipreports.ca so you don't miss a thing. And as always, thanks for tuning in. For Rebel News, I'm Adam Sos. Because if you want to ensure that you don't miss a thing on the Conservative Party leadership race, you have to go to leadershipreports.ca. We are very often the only media outlet on location covering these many events. So if you want to make up your own mind, make your own decision, get all the information, the place to go again is leadershipreports.ca.